as promised at President Biden's State of the Union address, the U.S. military is preparing to set up a temporary aid station off of Gaza's coast. Aid into Gaza has decreased sharply since the Israel-Hamas war began five months ago. Although in recent days, the U.S. has been airdropping supplies. At least 20 people have died from malnutrition and dehydration due to cutoffs from food supply services. Let's bring in John Elliott, managing partner at Brighton Strategies Group and former national security spokesman and a Marine Corps veteran. John, good to have you with us today. Great, thanks for having me back, Tracy. Absolutely, so tell us how big of an undertaking is this and how can this be done, as President Biden said, with no boots on the ground? Well, that's the absolute question, Tracy, because we do not want to be drawn into anything to do with Gaza uh, in terms of what he said, boots on the ground. But let's be very careful about what he was saying there, because boots on the ground implies that there's going to be no military there, because those are the ones who theoretically wear, quote unquote, combat boots. But does that mean that we wouldn't have engineers there working on, on putting this pier, is what it's called? It's sort of a port, but it's really a pier that goes across. How can you build that without having experts on the ground? So presumably what he's talking about is it could be U.S. contractors. There's also a group that is based in Switzerland and is an international group, but is run by some former military from the U.S. And they might have some people from other countries do it for us, but it would be under the direction of this private company. Bottom line is that there's no way to build this without having some experts on the ground. And then you get into a situation like we had in the early 80s with Beirut under Ronald Reagan, where we had a mission of Marines there and they were t a target. So we don't want to have even our contractors, U.S. contractors, be targets there because it's a, it's a meat grinder there, literally, because you've got Hamas evil group that is hiding behind civilians. They would love to be able to kill Americans when they can. Yeah, and that's a huge, huge challenge right there. So how do they combat that? I mean, what can they do to, you know, prevent getting into some kind of conflict with, you know, Hamas or another hostile actor? Well, they're already, the U.S. has had three military operators killed, military troops killed uh, from the proxies from Iran, and Hamas is obviously one of their biggest proxies, but they have already killed three Americans, and so they'd like, love to do it again. They had over 175 attacks since October 7th on U.S. forces in different bases across the region. So. This is very much of a knife's edge, and it's very dangerous what, what Biden is talking about. He's saying because he is getting flack from his left, from people who are activists within his, his party, and he needs to show that he is sympathetic to providing more humanitarian aid to Gazans, he's running a real risk that he's putting our troops or our contractors right in on a knife's edge there where they could, for, for very little reason, get uh, become the victim of a terrorist attack. What about Israel? Uh, what are they saying about this? Okay, Israel is obviously Israel in in the opinion of many many analysts including myself should be allowed to run the war. That would be the most efficient way to get it done quickly and not get other countries pulled in including the US. So Israel was initially wary and I think remains wary because why would they want to have a bunch of ships coming in? They'd all come from Cyprus because you never know what's going to be in there, what's going to be smuggled in there. Are there going to be weapons? Are there going to be bombs and other things that Hamas could use to target them? So the Israelis late today said that they were going to have security measures put in place in Cyprus where there'd be very thorough inspections to the Israeli level of thoroughness. And it would actually be done by Israeli personnel before any of these uh, ships came down to this port that we're building. And let's face it, the port's going to take months to build. So right now there's going to be some amphibious craft that can take some that's going to start in the next few days. But to actually build the port or the pier is going to take some time. So we'll see. But it's, uh, it's very costly and it's very risky to do so. All right, John, thank you so much for coming on and weighing in. So much more we could talk about, but we have to wrap it up. Thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate thank it. you, Tracy.